four, three, two, one. Okay. Hey, Tom. Hey, Mike. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Oh, wait. This is the first time doing this countdown, so I hope it worked because I'm, you know, new to this whole like countdown screen thing. Um, hi, everyone who's tuned in. Um, I'm super excited to have Tom here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and this is the 20th, I can't believe, 20th episode of the Messy Desk stream. Um, and the last one of season one. So you get the honor of being the last in this season, Tom. Uh, so I'm going to ask Tom to introduce himself in a second here. But first, um, anyone who's watching, if there's something weird with the audio levels, tell me because I can adjust them. As usual, uh, please share the stream if you're enjoying it. Uh, like And ask any questions you have for Tom or for me. Just put questions in the chat and we'll try to get to all of them. Um, and what else? Yeah, you can check Tom's channels and stuff in the description. But um, I think I met, Tom, I think I met you, did I meet you in Montreal? Or no, Domain Forge. I think it was it was Domain Forge back yeah. in, um, when was that, 2015 maybe? Yeah, it was a while ago. <laughs> so that's the first time we met. But then we've been at a few festivals together and stuff since then. Yeah, I, th I think last time was Hamilton, right? Yeah, that's right. That was um, a good time. Yeah, Hamilton's always a great time. They have a great festival there. Uh, but do you want to give the audience a quick uh, intro to you, what you do and stuff, and then we'll listen to some music? Sure. Um, well, hello. My name is Tom Clippinger. Um, I'm a classical guitarist. Uh, most, I mostly play contemporary music. I'm doing my DMA at UT Austin with Adam Holtzman right now. And I'm a member of the Austin Guitar Quartet um, group I really enjoy working with. And yeah. Awesome. That's cool. Pretty much it. Nice. And uh, we're going to listen to some suggestions first, right? So can you tell people yes. a little bit about this piece? So this first piece is called, um, well, first set of pieces is called Two Suggestions by Salvador Brotons. Um, he is a Spanish composer. And he actually went to um, Florida State where I did my master's. So um, I guess he was there around the same time as like Ricardo Cobo. And this is his first guitar piece he wrote when he was like 20 or something like that. I probably have some of this wrong, but um, yeah, really nice music. Cool. And um, when did he write them then? Um, 83. Oh, okay. So they're not as recent as the other pieces we're going to listen to later. No, yeah, this is this is probably the oldest. No, actually, no, it's not. The Goodbye Delina that I'll play that I, I'll play later is actually the oldest piece here, but um, this is not that new. Okay, yeah, but '80s, still fairly recent. And do other, have other people performed and recorded these pieces, or are they pretty underplayed? The uh, I think a few people have recorded and played them. I don't really know who. Okay. Uh, there was one recording I listened to. I guess first when I first found these pieces, it was um. I forgot his name, honestly. I haven't listened to it since, but um, yeah. And why did you pick up these pieces? Um, there, I, I thought the first movement especially was really, really beautiful, and like I, the language it's written in is really, really nice. Um, yeah, the second movement I, I didn't really do a whole lot for me. It's kind of like okay, non guitarist composer writes loud, fast movement. Yeah. For <laughs> solo guitar. But um, is it difficult? Which one? The, the the second segment. It's not as hard as the first. The first movement is very difficult, just because I mean, it's it's written by a non guitarist. Anytime you have tonal music, well, not anytime. Most times you have tonal music written by a non guitarist. It's going to be pretty tricky. Yeah, yeah, because the counterpoint's not written with the guitar in mind. Exactly. So trying to make it legato is a bear. But... Yeah. Did you edit but much the... or? I didn't edit at all. Okay, you didn't change anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is possible. Cool. Okay, so two suggestions by Salvador Bretons. Breton? Bretons. Breton. I don't know. Yeah. Bretons. Okay, Bretons. Okay, let's listen to this recording. And where did you record this and when? Uh, this is from my uh, first DMA recital at UT um, okay. in March, I think. Yeah, March March 6th. University of Texas. Cool. And you're in Texas yeah. now, right? Actually, I'm in Virginia at the moment. Uh, okay, because of this current global situation. Yep. Right. Okay, well... Let's listen to this recording from your time at UT.
Awesome. I forgot to cut that audio out, my bad. No, it's all good. That sounds great, man. Second movement is pretty uh tritty in some ways. It's cool. Pretty what? It's a little bit it's a little bit tritty the last movement. Oh yeah. Well just a lot of strumming. Uh, Kevin Lowe says there's a great recording by Alice Gotta Obey of these. Have you heard Yeah, that's the one I listened to when, when I first started playing the piece. Yeah. Ah, cool. Nice. It's a good, very good recording. Yeah. I, I would, I think I would have uh, stuck with it, but Holtzman wanted me to play it totally different. So it's like, I can't, I can't listen to this anymore. So. Right. I mean, that's the thing you have to worry about when you're doing something that's not off, that's not played by a lot of people. If there's only one or two recordings out there and you kind of, I think sort of form your idea of the piece from that, it can be a little problematic, right? I mean, right. Yeah. Um, I had the same thing when I was playing shadow prism because Steve was the only one who'd recorded it. I think by that point, there might've been one other YouTube recording, but I had Steve's album and I loved it and I listened to it a lot. And then when I decided I was going to play that piece, I took a year or so where I just like refused to listen to it so that I could like purge my brain of what Steve did with the piece. Sure. Sure. So I could like come at it fresh. Yeah. I try not to listen to, to any, any recordings of pieces I play nowadays, honestly. Yeah, I think that's probably the best policy. So it helps when I choose pieces that nobody else plays at all, so I don't even have the option to listen. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> but I mean, at least with a piece that's like overplayed or something, then at least you have a lot of different like interpretations you've heard, so you don't sort of sure. get pulled towards just one. But yeah. Um, yeah, if people have questions for Tom, let us know. Um, but I'm wondering, Tom, if you could like, tell people a little bit more about what you're up to. I know you said you play mostly contemporary music, but are you working? Do you have any premieres coming up or like pieces that you're working on that are new that you're excited to play? Um, actually, well, during this concert, I premiered a set of, um, well, it's, it's act, the full set is actually um, 14 etudes, but I, I premiered the first seven in this same concert that we just saw. Cool. Uh, by, um, by Federico Bonacossi. Okay. The Miami-based composer. <clears throat> he's a guitarist also his music's extremely playable really good music um yeah i was gonna go give like a a second concert of those in miami in april but obviously you know yeah. everything got canceled and that's now rescheduled for september but we'll see what happens you know right um actually um just the other day i commissioned a piece from um a composer who i guess we'll probably hear next uh jose maria sanchez verdu Cool. Um, so he's going to write me around like a 10 minute piece that'll be premiered in 2021. Awesome. And um, my good friend, Jaleel Rafiq Kaya, is working on a set of pieces for me right now. I have the first two nice. um, so far. I think they're going to be like eight total. And they're, I think, I'm not, I'm not sure when they're going to be premiered yet, obviously, because I don't know when we're going to be playing concerts again. But yeah. Probably sooner rather than later. So I've started learning them and they're pretty hard. <laughs> Would really you, cool. Would you rather just give live premieres or would you consider doing recording premieres for some things now? Um, I mean, well, obviously part of, part of doing these live premieres is, you know, getting paid too. So, right. Yeah, of course. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind, uh, I wouldn't mind either as long as there's money for you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess, you yeah. could, I guess you could always just use your back catalog of pieces that you've commissioned that you've already premiered to record. If you want to just make recordings for your channel or whatever, it's not like you have to use new pieces. Yeah. Yeah. You know? For sure. A premiere maybe is better to say for when you can like sell tickets and have a concert and stuff. Actually with, with some of the quartet stuff, I think we're considering doing um, some online premieres. Okay. Just, just cause I mean, we haven't played together in so long. Cause obviously I'm like, you know, 1500 miles away and we can't rehearse anyways so yeah um so we, we've talked briefly about doing some video recordings so who's in the in the austin guitar quartet i think i think i know chad and um, chad ibison uh janet grahovic grahovic god i can't talk and uh steven christian steven christian okay steven's the only one i don't don't think i i know of but um so when did, when did you guys form the quartet uh we formed i guess around spring of 20 19 no okay. yeah yeah around then yeah okay so pretty recently yeah cool actually we just we our first performance ever was uh was playing um with the lagq and texas guitar quartet and Consperari. oh uh, cool and recording an album of nico muley's music um uh what was it how how little you are and that was that the recording of that will be out in uh delos in 2020 sometime. cool summer of 2020 i think 
Awesome. Yeah. Nice. And what do you guys focus on as an ensemble? Like what kind of repertoire? Um, I mean, obviously I'm like mostly gunning for contemporary music. Right. So you guys um, play a lot of new commissions. Or yeah, we've got, we've got a bunch of commissions so far. Um, yeah, we, by composer Seb Sebastian Zell, uh, Zach Gilbloth Davis, a uh, few other that we haven't, a few others that we haven't really finalized. Um, Matthew Lyons, really great Austin-based composer. Cool. Um, we're gonna play a piece by Jose Maria Sanchez Verdu. Nice. But, Is it um, for four guitars? For four guitars. Yeah, I think okay. it was. It was written. Who's the quartet? I don't remember which quartet it was written for. Um, some new music quartet in Europe. I, I don't remember which. Okay, so he's not a guitarist, right? He's not. No, but he loves writing. For yeah, he's written because I know a few people who've played his music here in Europe as well, and um, I mean he's written all those caprichos, right? Um, yeah. What other guitar pieces has he written? Oh, he's got a ton. Um, there's one for guitar and cello, which is really cool. I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, He's got a quartet piece. He's actually working on a guitar concerto right now. Oh, cool. Um, a ton of solo pieces. Actually, Marcin's playing one of his solo pieces. Uh, one of his first solo pieces, I think. Oh, cool. And then the one that I play, the Quaderna de Fried now, is one of his older pieces as well. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's all sorts of different um, instrumentations and whatnot. Yeah. So how do you choose composers to work with? with like what... Um or composers whose music you want to play since you play so much contemporary music like i always think it's interesting looking at this question because i feel like contemporary music there's such a wide variety of languages uh like musical languages i mean that people write in now so i think people think of contemporary music as kind of like a monolith you know it's like one thing whereas i actually think it's much more complicated than that and the category is almost a little bit meaningless other than to say it's music that's not that old you know um yeah so how do you choose like a program from that like how what's kind of your process of picking stuff um honestly i just take music that i like i don't give it too much thought as far as like uh what flows well into what and okay there's nothing like that involved it's it's kind of just like okay i like this piece i like this composer mm -hmm. put it on the program so what and it's usually it's not like stylistically um un unified either you know yeah not that that, need, that, that doesn't need to be a thing i mean i guess i guess it can't be that would be pretty awful <laughs> yeah variety is probably pretty good in most concert settings i would imagine yeah um yeah. but like so but what what kind of style like stylistic things are you drawn to or is it pretty right now i'm kind of more into the um the like really out there stuff like i'm learning the barrio sequenza and i'm doing my doctoral research on the barrio sequenza okay um the sanchez verdu as you will hear or as you've probably already heard um is very out there but people will hear it we'll we'll, we'll yeah people will assault hear, yeah. them with this piece soon <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna lose lose some viewers potentially but that's yeah. okay um <laughs> or gain them you know some people are into weird stuff it's good true like me <laughs> yeah exactly we're looking for the weirdos here yeah um yeah otherwise i mean like I, i've been playing the brotons i think the longest set of all my pieces um i started that and i guess right before i went to ut okay so that's pretty traditional i think that's before i really got into the really right it's not stuff. that out there right and the goodbye delina is also very traditional in okay. most most senses the first movement i mean it's not not super tonal or anything but yeah it's it, tradition i would consider it to be traditional guitar music right second right. movement for sure or it's not really movements you have the toccata and the serenade this the serenade is pretty traditional yeah uh drago Ilya says tommy looks so cute fast scales i don't know what the fast <laughs> scales comments are referring to <laughs> i don't either thank you drago i'm touched, <laughs> so touched. <laughs> nice cool. awesome yeah i mean also like working with a composer i feel like um it's also important i mean to like consider the language they write in obviously when you approach someone to work with them but also yeah. it's different in a way because it's not like making a program where you kind of know what the outcome is going to be when you commission a piece you're like sort of putting your trust in the composer that they'll make something that you want to play right Wait, sorry you cut out a little bit there what was that um when you ask to work with a composer when you commission something you're kind of putting your trust in them that they'll produce something that you really want to play and that you want to yeah keep playing, yeah right so 
that's a different kind of like choice of who to ask and when yeah i think you have to be, like listen to a lot of their music and be like okay i really like in general what they do like their whole their whole thing you know and then yeah. if you if you do then it's like okay i can you know invest some money into the commission or the effort into getting funds for a commission yeah for sure um Zaraka says when you asked what do you look for in peace ah yes so tom just looks for fast scales right yeah so yeah just fast so, yeah so, so shallow tom uh tim bd says <laughs> now there's a site for sore eyes thumbs up if tom should keep the beard forever i agree everyone who wants tom to keep the beard give a thumbs up reaction everyone who wants him to shave it off give an angry react <laughs> <laughs> to the to the show it won't affect my decision but you should do it anyway <laughs> yeah we'll we'll, we'll tally, tally up the results at the end yeah. uh, <laughs> and it won't it won't change anything but yeah, yeah. um cool nice all right. Well, Tom, it's time for my gotcha question. You ready? What? It's time for the gotcha question that I ask everybody. Oh, okay. The gotcha cool. question is, how do you define classical guitar? Oh, my God. I don't know. <laughs> it's the worst question. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess the, the instrument plays a huge role. But then again, maybe it doesn't because, I mean, really contemporary stuff, there's stuff for um electric guitar that's still probably technically classical guitar i don't know i mean i, I guess anytime... i mean i'm split on this i'm in kind of two minds about the like contemporary i guess it, it depends guitar. like if you think contemporary guitar is classical guitar i don't think it is I necessarily think... there's overlap but maybe i don't know i've never considered this question before really but you, say, you even... say you're a classical guitarist so you have to know yeah how you it's, define it's, it. it's easier that way you know i mean okay to, to label yourself as something like that i play a nylon string guitar i sit like <laughs> my guitar like this therefore i'm a classical guitarist no i mean yeah um i don't know i don't even know if i am a classical guitarist anymore you know yeah yeah it's you know? a it's a problematic uh concept yeah. i guess oh my gosh ioana gunjaber is being a real joker she says looks fine to me lol <laughs> 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 thank you <laughs> yes <laughs> um she's trusting that it looks good i guess um yeah so the yeah I, okay you the sitting position the strings seriously i have no idea okay like Cause i be, can't answer that question okay well that's an honest answer thank you tom yeah <laughs> Very good. but i mean maybe if, if i don't know maybe by some people's standards i'm not a classical guitarist at all so i, I and that's okay. It doesn't matter. Right. I mean, right. I guess it doesn't really matter how other people define you as long as you know what you're doing. No, right? no, not really. So, yeah. Very wise, Tom. Very wise. Um, <laughs> we're going to play a little game, Tom. You ready? We're going to play some oh, uh, no. repertoire listening test. Are you Are you prepared? Have you been studying? Uh, yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. I don't so, listen to guitar at all, so this should be fun. This should be great. Um... Well, I tried to I try, I try to build the repertoire listening test a little bit based on the guests. So I think um, <laughs> Tim says, by my standards, Tom isn't a guitarist. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Okay, we're going to listen to some music and you're going to guess the piece, uh, the composer and the player. So you can get three points per. Okay. Um, yeah, per like uh, per uh, piece. And um, I, I'll give you some hints. And you have also one lifeline, okay? So you can like, um, okay, you can ask the audience for help on one, uh, like one piece, but only one piece, okay? Sure. Yeah. All right. So beginner category. There's three pieces in each category: beginner, intermediate, advanced. Beginner category number one. Oh. Jeez, I did not delete the ones from the previous episode, so now this whole thing is like super um, clogged up. Oh god! So am I exempt from this test? No, 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 no. I'm just gonna fix it because I still had Adams. Okay. There is, okay, that's correct. Okay, ready? Number one. Any idea? That kind of sounds like that fifth bagatelle. Yeah, but... we'll listen to some more here. Ready? What do you think? I guess that's some sort of arrangement of the fifth bagatelle. You're orchestra. correct. <laughs> <laughs> arrangement of the fifth bagatelle for guitar and orchestra. That's cool. I've never heard that before. And wow. the composer is? 
uh, William Walton. Okay, I'll give you a... Um, <laughs> Pablo Villafuerte says, please make it all romantic guitar rap. I considered <laughs> torturing you with like please romantic don't. and Baroque music. <laughs> and then I was like, no, I'm going to be nice and do, do like all contemporary. Or, or like, tw- not contemporary, but like within the last hundred years at least. Um, okay, so it's an arrangement of the fifth bag guitar for guitar and orchestra. Um, oh, and Tom, you shouldn't be looking at the chat during this game. Oh, I'm not. I can't um, read. It's all good. <laughs> I can't read. Um, and the player. Okay, I'll give you a hint for the player. This player um, uh, quite likes Jesus. Uh, Christopher Parkening? Christopher Parkening. Correct. Nice job. So three out of three. You got all three. Nice. Wow. Nice. I'm off to a better start than I thought it would be. Yeah, there's this whole CD where Christopher Parkening plays uh, Iron Quest, and then also these like arrangements of the Bagatelles for or guitar and orchestra. Cool. Yeah, it's neat actually. Um, I was like a little bit confused when I found it, but you know, we got there. Okay, number two, second one. <laughs> That's Mysterious Habitats for sure by Bogdanovich. Correct. Uh, who's playing it? Um, Bogdanovich, Mysterious Habitats. Tim's got who it. Who plays also. that? Uh, Is it Javier or something? It's not Javier. I mean, this doesn't sound like Javier, really. Like, come on, listen to the beginning. Oh, I've only heard, ever heard his recording, so I have no other guesses. Wait a second. This must be the wrong album cover for this. Uh, this player wrote a very famous um, technique book. Um, it's not Javier Dragos. Um, Ooh, Tim got it. This... Don't look at the chat. Don't look at the chat. <laughs> okay, well, I saw it, so I won't uh... guess. Just assume I don't get that point. That's okay. okay. <laughs> Were you going to guess that name? No. Well, you said technique. And I was like, I, I just didn't know he played that piece. I guess he did. Okay. So. Scott yeah. Tennant. Yeah. But the weird thing is Spotify says the album cover says Wild Mountain Time Celtic music for guitar played by Scott Tennant. I think that must be wrong. This is this is not a Celtic piece, right? I don't think so. I don't think so yes. in any sense. Okay. Well, we'll give, <laughs> we'll give you two out of three on that one. Cool. Okay, uh, last one in the beginner category. That's uh, the Brower Black Cameron. Yes, correct. And I have no idea who's playing it. Who's the player? Um, what's a Tim or what's a tip I can give? Um, yes, Tim, it's, uh, it is a Brower. Um, um, this player teaches in a quite important school in the Eastern United States. Is it Sharon Isbin? It's Sharon Isbin. Good one. Sweet. You got it. Yeah, it's like, I think you can uh, kind of hear her sound, so it's pretty easy to narrow that yeah. down. Sharon has been placed borrowed. Okay, so eight out of nine in the beginner category. I feel like it's a bit easy on you, but there you are. I do I do, I do, do care about you, Tom. Thank you, Mike. Um, okay, intermediate category. You ready? Sure, yeah. Any idea? No. 
Um, what can I give you as a hint? Oh, oh, people in the chat already have it. Um, uh, this is a American composer, but based from apparently, according to Wikipedia, based from Guatemala, according to uh. Wikipedia. Oh, Drago is very good. I already got the player. Is this um? It sounds familiar. Uh, is it one of the GFA set pieces or something? Uh, it may have been a set piece at one point, but I don't Someone. know when. I don't remember. Was it called? Whirler of the Dance or whatever? Whirler of the Dance. You got it. And who's the composer? We took a second there. Uh, I don't know his first name. R Rivera, maybe? Yeah, Rivera. Yeah, Carlos Rafael Rivera. Rivera, yeah. And who's the player? It's a GFA Tonight. winner. I'll give you that. Uh, Jason Villa. No, Dennis has a baggage. Uh, okay. Yeah. Nice. You got it. Very good. Two or three. Uh, okay. Next one. Oh, okay. That's the Ross Thorn elegy. Yes, Ross Thorn elegy. Tim says, okay, Mr. Tom, I don't listen to guitar music, Clippinger. You aren't fooling us. <laughs> Every piece are like, oh, yeah, the Ross Thorn elegy, yes. After like two seconds. Oh, this isn't, this isn't too bad, but <laughs> we'll see what the advanced category looks like. I'm probably going to get rocked. Who's the player here, though? Uh, No idea. No guess? From the sound? Do you want to hear a later part? Let's listen to the faster section. Yeah, yeah. Where's the fast bits? Is this Julian Bream? Yes. Julian Bream. Sweet. Classic. Three out of three. Wow. Okay, <laughs> next one. Oh, okay. Elliot Carter, Shard. Oh, God. Like, literally three seconds. I love that piece. Elliot uh, Carter, Shard. And who's the player? I keep playing. I keep playing. David Sarabin? No, not David Sarabin. Two more guesses. Um. Oh, Marcin. Marcin, yeah, it's Marcin Dila. <laughs> I was like, wait, that's, that's, yeah, there's a lot of flexibility there. That's Marcin. There's a lot of flexibility <laughs> there. Someone's taking a little bit of time to enjoy every moment. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Not the most rhythmic uh, player. Yeah. I mean, I, lo I love Martin, but, and I love his playing, but yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's still amazing. Yeah. yeah, but it's just different. Just different. It's not bad. Just different. Okay. Um, yeah. Next one. You remember, you have a lifeline if you need it. Okay. Okay. Um, you could use your lifeline if you think the audience can help you, or or I can give you the composer, and then you can try and guess like the player at least. Do you want to know the composer? Yeah. William Bland. Really? Yes. Oh. That, I was kind of thinking that. It sounded like his uh, third piano guitar, or second second or third piano guitar sonata. It is a piano guitar sonata by, so I'll give you the piece, because you got sonata. It's number four, the fourth piano guitar sonata. Oh, it's four. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, th- you're not yeah. going to get the number, so you got the piece for guessing the type of piece. Um, and who's cool. the player? Who would record William Bland? Piano and guitar. I, sonata, probably so. David Starevin. David right? Starevin. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Two out of three. Really good for like the hardest. Wow, piece. that's crazy. Thing. Yeah, that's crazy. That's pure luck. Well, no, you're like, it sounds like a William Bland piano guitar sonata. I think you're get, not giving yourself <laughs> enough credit, man. Um, okay. Uh, ready? play the later part. for the audience for help there's one more piece after this so you could save your lifeline okay who's here who might be able to help me you want to use your lifeline okay everybody please help tom uh there's a bit of a delay so i'll play some more so people can listen Is that like, is that Sergio Assad? It's Sergio Assad. Oh my God. How did you know? And that part kind of sounded like Sergio Assad. The rest of it didn't really sound like <laughs> Okay. Yeah. It's Sergio Assad. What's the piece though? Anyone? Uh, the body? Dragos also said Assad. Nice. Not bad. Any guesses for the piece? Are you going to give up? Yeah, I think I'm going to give up. It's his Sonata third movement. Cool. Oh, Drago said, I'd say his Sonata. There you go. So you get the point because that was your lifeline. He helped you. Oh, sick. Good one, Drago. Good guess. Um, And the player? The Asian player. Meng Su. No, Xianji Liu. Right. Okay, so two out of three. That's pretty good. You're doing. Uh, you might be getting a record score in this whole game. I think. Okay. Last, really? Wow. Last Shocked. last one. Let's see here. Uh, where is it? Yes. Here we go. I know this one. This is, uh, I only know this because I saw Tim Beatty play this recently. Oh, damn it. I was hoping you wouldn't <laughs> have heard that recording. Yeah, it's Tim the. Tim um, ruined my game. The um, Berkeley theme and, or Barkley or however you say it, theme and variations. No, it's four short pieces by Barkley, but you got the composer. Oh, my God. Same. <laughs> Yeah. Barkley four pieces. I thought about putting the theme in variations on the show, and then I was on the guessing game, and I was like, no, I'll put the, I'll be nice and put the four pieces because he may have heard Tim's recording, and you still got oh, the man. wrong piece. Uh, <laughs> the question is, who's the player? You got the composer right, at least. It's a British player. English player, I guess. Uh, slightly older generation. John Williams? No. Sounds like John Williams. No, it doesn't. I guess that was probably then Julian Bream. Right? No, it's Graham Devine. Oh. Uh. Yes. Um, okay, so one out of three. You know what, Tom? You did great. 
in the beginner category, you got eight out of nine. Intermediate, you got eight out of nine again, which is unheard of almost. And then advanced, you got uh, five out of nine. All right. So nice work. Tim says divine probably. Yeah, he's right. Uh, Tim, hmm. you know, this is your chance to plug your video by posting it in the comments. It sounds really good. <laughs> it does indeed. It's wonderful. Wunderbar. Um, okay. Uh, so we're going to listen to you play some Sanchez Verdun now. Okay. The weirdo music. Cool. Um, you want to talk about it some more? What's the piece called? What's it about? Um, this piece is called Quaderno de Friedenau by Jose Marina Sanchez Verdu. Um, it's um, structurally kind of weird. I, I think it it isn't super obvious. Um, it's it's based on texture, I think, and different rhythmic gestures. But it's not. There's not a whole lot you can like latch onto formally. Yeah, this is like the, um, the piece my friend Leo played by him was a lot like this. Which like, piece was that? Uh, it was one of the Caprichos, but I don't remember which one. Oh, okay, okay. But I remember just looking at the score with Leo because I was playing Shadow Prism at the time, and he's like, you're playing an Alien Torque piece. You should look at this piece and help me. Then I looked at the score, and I was like, uh, there's a lot more architecture that makes that, that can latch onto in Shadow Prism than this, which is saying something, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this um, this music is yeah, a, lot of, a lot of different stuff. You'll have one note. It'll start off as like a harmonic or as a fretted note, and then you'll sort of unfret and go towards the left side of the fret, towards the head sock. And then it'll become a thud. And then you'll move it over to the right side of the fret and it'll become a harmonic. So you have this uh, sort of um, yeah, yeah. deconstruction of a, a fretted note, you know? So wait, do you is this? are you on your computer right now? Yeah. Do you have a PDF you could screen share and show, so like show an example or no? Um, I can send you it and you can do it because I have no idea. I, I'm okay. really bad with computers. I can send it to you right now. That would be cool um because uh, it would be it would be kind of cool actually to look at the score and just have you show like a few things of what you're doing because the the like the notation that i remember seeing on the piece leo played leo Zale, um who's a great german guitarist studying in maastricht also he okay. um he played one of these actually at a concert that sanchez verdu was at and it was like a concert dedicated to his music in hamburg that's so awesome he like learned this for that concert but yeah I, the score that i looked at at leo's was like it looked like a freaking like i don't know piece of code or something it's pretty, it was pretty nice yeah so the first few days um looking at this score you're just kind of banging your head against the wall yeah i would i felt i feel like i would have been kind of frustrated having to learn it not because it's not good music but just because like trying to make sure that you like actually get what you're supposed to do you know sure yeah seems tricky i just sent it um yeah, it's not it's not like it's super rhythmically complex or anything like that. I mean, it's not like easy. It's not but it, most of it is just trying to fit everything in yeah. to make it sound right. Did you send it to my email or my Yeah, I just sent it to your email. Oh, okay, okay. I'm opening it and then I'll pull it up. On I can call. send it somewhere else. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. I got it. Uh and what does Quaderno de Friedeno mean? Um well, Quaderno is what? Like no notebook or Okay, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think this is like um, just like a, a memoir of his time in Freed now. And actually, you know, I've talked to him a lot and I have not talked to him about this piece really. Oh, okay. In depth. I should. It's something I've been meaning to do. It just hasn't happened yet. So I don't have any fun facts or anything. Um, it's from 1998 and it's one of his earlier guitar pieces. That's about the extent of my knowledge. I'm going to share the screen with you and then share it on the stream and people will be able to uh, observe. Oh, window. Oh, and just for those who are following the score with this piece, uh, I made some mistakes rhythmically. So, uh, Well, I mean, that's not a problem. Window capture to let's put it at. There we go. Okay, so we're looking at the score now. Um, there's the legend. What do we have? Oh, yeah, you have to, I had to translate all that, too. I don't really speak Spanish. Oh, okay, all. so it wasn't even in English, <laughs> oh, the legend. God. Okay, here's the... Okay, so what's going on here? What do you do at the beginning here? This, like, 5-8, this thing. 
Tambora. Okay, Tambora. Okay, so the the meter doesn't start obviously until you have that Tambora thing. Um, so the, I guess the first um, thirty second that there is preceded by that little sweeping gesture. But once you land on that low E flat square to turn or D sharp, um, that's sort of like the first beat of the five eight. Okay. And okay. And then what is? Oh, you just let things let things ring into the just six let things eights. ring, yeah. yeah. And then you have okay, so this is all like handwritten. This is like what Leo had too. It was not notated out in like uh yeah, yeah. All of his stuff is like this. Okay. Tapping on a sinistra. Okay. So what is the tapping? You're tapping on just like this sort of thing. Uh like left a... it just articulate left hand articulation. Left hand articulation. Okay. Oh, so it's like some of it you're playing with just your left hand, basically. Yeah, then you got some of this stuff going on too, you know, Van Halen esque. Yeah, five thirty two, nine thirty two. Okay. Okay, intense. Uh, neat. Well, at this point, I'm like kind of lost and confused. What are these notes that have like partly partially filled in? Notes? Okay, so that's what I was talking about there. So you see how it starts off with just a normal uh, note with with a staccato marking above. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that's that's a normal fretted note, and okay. then as it gets as it gets lighter, um, and less shaded. So those right there, where your mouse is over, sorry, where it's like half and half, that yeah. you're over sort sort of towards the left side of the fret, okay. right? And it's more of a thuddy sound, and then as you get to the um, unfilled notes there at the end of the measure, mm -hmm. that's a, that's a harmonic. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. At the at which oh at the fifth. Okay, I see. So you're kind yeah, of like the, moving left, and then yeah. So you can... sort of it sort of starts as a fretted note, then you move left, so it's sort of thuddy, and then to the right, so it creates the harmonic. harmonic. That ah. pitch would be what B. Cool. And then you have the same thing here with this F sharp. Yeah. Seven eight plus same one, idea. Okay. There's a lot of downward sweeps. It seems. Yes. It's very. It's very guitaristic in the eyes of a non-guitarist okay from the eyes of a non-guitarist okay P-O-H-L so this is the, okay but he didn't bother to do like the kind of like notes beams beams extending outwards kind of thing um, what do you mean he just says a cell here um, instead of having like oh but it's to a specific tempo marking I see okay yeah 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 cool uh, Dolce okay and th what's with the chords that are half filled in are those like same deal thuddy. as, as okay. the single notes yeah but you're moving the chords up as you do that also. Oh, that's confusing. Yeah. And then some nice bar talk pizzicatos. Cool. Oh, yeah. Okay, I feel like we've, this is, if we get any deeper, like, looking at this. Actually, story. there's cooler stuff later. Oh, no, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, there's cool stuff later. Okay, let me let me scroll down. Uh, where? But, I mean, we don't have to nerd out on this. It's all good. We can just listen to it. Oh, uh, there's some cool triplets coming. Okay, anyways, we're going we're gonna to listen to the piece now. Now oh. that I've made everybody... Uh, yeah. Okay, let's hear the Sanchez radio.
nice, man. Thank you. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the Zoom call back. It didn't, ah, um, oh, there, this one is the one I have to mess with. Um, sorry, your video is not showing up, but it's just OBS being silly. Maybe if I, oh. oh, there we go, now we're back. Nice, just stunning, says Tim Beatty, indeed. Thank you, Tim Beatty. very and, nice. Uh, Ioana says, so expressive. Jacob says, that is some funky flow. <laughs> Um, oh, and Pablo, uh, did you see Pablo's comment? Yes, about the um, back and heck forth. three. We we have the score for that. Um, I hope we can play it. Yeah, I would love to play it. <laughs> uh, Tim says, guys, I have to run, but looking forward to watching the rest of the interview and continuing to ogle Tom's beard later. Well, <laughs> Tom's beard will be there to ogle forever online. So. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Tim, for watching. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, so like you had to translate. I mean, the legend. But did you? I mean, I'm assuming you talked to him, the composer, like Jose, a, a, a fair bit about the like what he wanted to sort of answer your questions. Did you kind of ask him for help to like make sense of what he was after in some places, or did you just sort of like to work through it yourself? I just worked through it myself. Okay. He sent okay. me a recording of it that he liked. And I was like, okay, well, this is probably, you know, a pretty good, you know, reference um, place to start from. Yeah. So, yeah, that was it. I mean, I didn't really ask him what it meant. I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward if you really sit down and study it. Okay. Um, it's just kind of weird. It's very, it's not stuff you usually do on the guitar. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's beyond anything I've played. Um, I mean, I had a hard enough time sort of like learning. I mean, you didn't memorize it, though, which is probably smart. I mean, memorizing that would just be... Yeah, I don't think there's any point in memorizing music like that. There's just so much there. Like, yeah, you, it would take so much time, and I don't think the, the end result would necessarily be worth it, you know? Yeah, with Shadow Prism, I memorized it, but it's much more aleatoric in the sense of, like, you kind of need to come up with your own narrative for it architecturally. Yeah. And I feel like that's a bit different because you're a little bit more in the driver's seat in terms of the form as opposed yeah. to this. So sure. memorizing it has some upside, whereas this, I don't see yeah. the upside, you know? Also, also like, not that this matters so much, but um, if you're to play this for an audience who's not really familiar with the music and you're, you're, um, you don't have the, you don't have the music in front of you, they're like, what is Why is this guy doing all this weird stuff to his guitar? You know, what's, what's happening? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas if you have the music in front of you, it's like people at least know like, oh, okay, that's what's written. Wow, that's crazy. Like, that's bizarre. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of sort of assuming that you're just riffing. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Well, Tom, um, I'm curious about what your thoughts on practicing and technique are. If you have any advice for people, what have you been finding useful for yourself? What's your journey been? Um, well, ever since I started playing classical guitar, I've done technique every day for sure. Um, I think Soar, Carcassi, um, that stuff is great. We should be doing some of it most of the time. Um, and then just, I don't know, lately I've been focusing a lot on relaxation and posture stuff like that okay so i think i think that's something that we don't really give enough importance to you know um like if, if we're not sitting we're not sitting sitting up straight when we're playing we're probably going to get hurt eventually you know we're practicing four plus hours a day um so actually what i've been doing is um i put on uh, what do you call it a posture corrector it's like the it, it's like a backpack without a bag on the back you know what i mean oh, okay. just keeps you sitting up straight so if i have a new piece particularly uh, like if i'm if uh, like i'm getting into the music or whatever and i lean over and i start sitting like this and learning the piece like this like it's gonna it's gonna hurt to play that piece so i usually like to start a new piece putting on like a posture corrector so and just staring at myself in, in the mirror when i'm not looking at the music and just making sure everything's very symmetrical okay um as far as technique goes, I mean, I think the most valuable right hand technique thing that I do every day is cross string trills. Like I don't play Baroque music or anything like that. I have no real like musical reason to play cross string trills. Right. Besides like in the sequenza, but um, yeah, like I think that that's like the ultimate um, 
right hand workout just keeps everything working keep, gives you good control of like well if you if you practice string crossing with it i think it, it gets everything mm-hmm. flowing well and yeah i mean i can show you what i'm talking about if, if you want yeah how do you do cross string what's your method for practicing cross string trills um also mark says mark Hertz says hey tom very interesting pieces nice pl- piece nice playing uh, thank you, Jaime uh, Marquez Diaz Canedo. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the interviews. Um, if anybody who's watching wants to see the other interviews, if you click on the Patreon link, there's actually all the interviews archived there, free to watch. So you can go there, or you can find them on my YouTube channel. But if you're looking for the other interviews, they're all archived there. Okay, so what do you do for cross string trolls? So it's like. P, no, you can't even see my right hand here. Yeah. P, can you move the camera or no? A, M, I. Okay, so you do the P, A, M, I across two strings. Okay, so the so it's M like crosses. tremolo, basically. Yeah, I do the same one. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's easier to do it continuously. I think the other one, which is what, A, M, or A, I, M, P. I can't do that. I just, my hand wants to move around too much. If I'm doing P, A, M, I. Everything's right there. I can do this all day, you know. Yeah. So, so the exercise that I do, um, I usually I don't even know if I should try this. I haven't played guitar yet today, but so I'll go a half step above. So this is all based on the open strings. So going a half step above the E, which is F, obviously, then a half step below D sharp, and then C B. A sharp, B, G sharp, G, F sharp, G, stuff like that. So, and then ascending. Etc. Yeah. Doing that. Sounds pretty um, cool. Yeah, it keeps it more interesting than just, yeah. It's, it's, it's it sort of engages the left hand a little bit. But then like doing some um, rhythmic stuff with this too, I think is, is what I've been focusing on. Just getting a, I guess a stricter sense of like where the quarter note is just in playing cool. music or where the pulse is and playing anything really. Mm-hmm. So see if I can do this right now. Maybe, Sounds bad, but so if I just go, one more thing. Yeah, but it's kind of fun. Sounds fun, actually. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, otherwise, I mean, just the normal stuff, like practicing slowly. And Do you do arpeggios? What? Do you do arpeggios? Yeah, uh, like not so much, really, honestly, okay. anymore. Um, you don't do, like, Carlevar or anything? Not really. Um, I, th- I think that what I really focus on is um, just the the continuous motion of the thumb, you know, so and like the independence of the thumb in between the fingers. Mm-hmm. So if I'm playing an arpeggio, like um, just if so, it's like P-I-M, A-M-I or whatever, mm-hmm. just being sure that the fingers stay like planted or not planted, but like still and then the thumb is moving on its own. I think that's the that's the main sort of thing I practice now is, is it's not like just specific exercises, but focusing on uh, stuff like continuous motion and mm-hmm. independence, which can be practiced in literally anything. You know, it doesn't really. Yeah, matter. I mean, you can use a, your, the passages from the pieces you're playing to do that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ioana says, "Wow, I know what I'll be practicing now." Yeah, you and me both, Ioana. <laughs> you and me both. Yeah, I actually have. For, there's a big hit me up for tabs. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's a there's a uh, big cross string um, 
section in this hopstock piece I'm playing. So I could really use this actually because I'm sometimes I'm struggling with like you're supposed to do a cellarando through, mm. you know, and so I, I need to yeah, I should I should do this exercise too. Improve my control of the cross string trill because I'm finding that like even even though I can play the a, a um yeah, the P A M I that fingering um effectively. Mm -hmm. Um controlling it in an arcellarando is difficult for me. So definitely, yeah. I think I first started doing those after um, I saw Paul Galbraith do the Britain Nocturnal. And in the, I want to say, the third, third or fourth, I, for, I forgot which, maybe the fourth um, variation, third variation, mm -hmm. I think um, he was doing the, this part that was written as like a, um, a left hand articulation. He was doing a cross string trills. And I was like, whoa, that's so cool. Oh, cool. You know? Nice. And, nice. Um, that's I think that's a good way of practicing it within like you know an actual piece of music. Yeah, in the shikon right now, I'm trying to do all my um, ornaments at the end of like the, the cadence cross string. So mm. yeah, nice thing. It's fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's nothing quite like a cross string texture on a guitar. I think it's the same with campanella scales. You know. Yeah, yeah, it's super cool. It's super special uh, thing that our instrument has. One of the neat tricks we have. Yes, one of one of several actually. One of quite a few. Yeah. Nice, awesome, uh, cool. Well, we're gonna do some um, classical guitar. Would you rather? You ready? Okay. Okay. Would you rather, Tom? Would you rather have shaky hands or shitty nails in a performance? Um. Well, you know, I think I would, I would before, before, before the performance, I would take care of either of these by a. <laughs> okay, Tom, that's not part of the scenario. You have to pick okay. one. Do you want but, to okay, but okay, in real, if this is a real life scenario, I'm gonna either take care of my nails or take a beta blocker. Okay, and that's okay, the okay. remedy for either. So. Right. Okay, that's fair. But like, but okay, but if you had to pick to have one in a performance, what would you prefer to have? A bad sound, uh, but like total control over both hands, or like a great sound but just shaking? Um, I don't know. They're both pretty bad. Um, they are. It's true. I guess probably shaky hands. Yeah. Better to have a good sound and just miss a few notes. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Having a bad sound is pretty disheartening, I think. Yeah, it's true. It's because it, there's nothing you can do to recover from that. Like. Yeah. Okay. If you had a gun to your head, if you what would you choose? Would you memorize and perform all the Rossinianas in six months, or would you uh, choose to only be allowed to play Brower Etudes for six months? Every time you pick up the guitar, that's the only thing you're allowed to play. Definitely the Rossinianas. <laughs> Definitely the Rossinianas. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Originally, this this question was Carcassi etudes, but I thought you would find the Brower one more interesting. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> hilarious. Okay, um, would you rather have your guitar go out of tune, really, really badly out of tune during a performance, or would you rather have a really big memory slip and need to restart like an entire section of a piece? Well, I guess it depends on the piece. If I was playing the Sanchez Verdu, for example, yeah. I mean, definitely it'd be okay if it went out a little out of tune, I think. <laughs> okay. I was, I was um, going to say memory slip because no one would be able to tell. <laughs> yeah, I guess either one is acceptable. <laughs> yeah. If you skipped a section or, or like went back to another section, they'd be like, oh, it's a repeat. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the, it depends on what I'm playing, I guess. Um, right. Okay. I think generally um, out of tune. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather be out of tune because um, that's something you can't control. Yeah, and people. So you don't people look that. you don't look irresponsible for having your guitar go out of tune. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. especially if it started in tune, then it's fine. Yeah. Okay, exactly. uh, and the last one is you have one week to like learn and memorize and perform one of these two pieces, and you have to pick one. And it's like even if you've played them before, let's pretend that you've never seen the score before. Would you okay. pick um, "Changes" by Elliot Carter? Remember, memorize. Or Mano a Mano by Lindbergh. Well, Changes is like half the length of Mano a Mano. Yeah, but it's like probably harder to memorize now. I don't know. I, I think I'd probably do Changes. I think okay. that'd be, I think that'd be easier for me. Interesting. Okay. Because Mano a Mano is just so long. Like memorizing that yeah. would, yeah. Yeah, it would be brutal. 
It changes. There's a lot to latch on to, you know, they're, they're like, I don't know. Yeah. And again, if you make a little mistake in changes, it's maybe not so noticeable. Right. Right. Although I guess in mono mono also partially true. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's listen to some goodbye to Lina. Who's uh, what, sorry. What's her oh. first name? This composer. Sophia. Sophia. Goodbye to Lina. Goodbye to Lina. Okay. And who was she? Is she? She's a Russian composer. Um, Oh yeah, so all the composers um, whose music I play today, they're all live. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, she's uh, I guess probably in her eighties now, if okay. I had to guess. And um, this piece is uh, Takata and Serenade. Takata and Serenade. Um, it's the only solo piece she has for um, guitar. Um, she also wrote a couple of chamber pieces um, involving double bass and cello, and I forgot exactly the instrumentation but they're pretty substantial they're like 30 minutes each wow uh repentance i know is one of them david tannenbaum has an album of all of the goodbye De goodbye delina guitar works oh cool uh, i don't know if anybody else does i mean other people have played the toccata and serenade for sure like uh, marcin's actually playing the um serenade right now oh cool okay um yeah so and um what, what drew you to this piece I think that, I don't know. It was, um, it's not like the piece itself like blew me away and I was like, wow, I have to play this. I mean, I thought it was a nice piece. I think it was um, just, I hadn't really heard heard it very often. It's a well-known composer, a uh, woman composer, which is great, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty accessible, not too long. Audience not like it audiences yeah the audience likes it um it's i don't know it's it's a it's a very it's a good piece of music you know cool not like and she's not a guitarist no she's not yeah cool it's nice to play music by non-guitarists that people haven't heard very much of you know yeah yeah um is it is it fairly like non-idiomatic would you say or is it fairly idiomatic for the instrument it's sort of it's sort of in between um like you can tell she's writing with the guitar in mind, but it's still not like super playable or anything like that. Yeah, like things are like she obviously hard. knows the structure, like how, how the guitar is structured and whatnot, but it's still you can tell she's never really played guitar. Right. Like I, I mean, same with most people, you know, guitarist composer or non guitarist composers who write for guitar. Yeah, that's quite common, I would say. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it can be better when they've worked with a guitarist to edit the piece during the production of the piece. Yeah, yeah. But that's even even then, I mean, you know, often like when I've, yeah, when you work with a composer who's not a guitarist, even then you don't really want to change things if it is possible to do them, even if they're not idiomatic, right? So, um, right, yeah. So that's even probably. then, it's not like it's not like working with a guitarist directly will make the piece actually more idiomatic. It just means they'll you'll mm -hmm. cut out impossible things yeah <laughs> so uh okay cool so takata and serenade by sophie uh goodbye delina let's hear this <laughs>
Super. Thank you. Very nice. Yeah, it's a nice piece. I really, I've, that's, uh, Serenade especially has really grown on me. Yeah. I think the Takata in that is sort of like the Takata and the Brotons. It's like non guitarist composer writes fast part <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's probably like harder than it sounds you know yeah for sure i mean it's that one is actually it's not that challenging it's not as challenging as i think i made it sound there but yeah but i mean uh, that's kind of the classic problem of non guitarist composers writing fast things it's like sure sure it's like yeah. when you play anything by tedesco that's quick it's like sounds like nice throw away light thing but it's like impossible to play cleanly <laughs> I've actually ne never played anything by Tedesco. Oh, you should try. I don't know what that's like. Yeah, it's um, it's stressful. <laughs> but, <laughs> so I've heard. but fun. But fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I love playing Tedesco, but yeah, it's 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 really hard. It's 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 one of those things where it's just a challenge. It's a challenge to give the right impression of just like this, like you know, graceful kind of totally yeah lyrical thing when it doesn't feel that way on the instrument. Right. Yeah. Yeah nice man that's great it's so, it's so nice to hear such like different music on the stream i really appreciate it i appreciate you playing it um so like everything you've kind of mentioned is sort of your current concert program right like do you have anything on the horizon that you're learning that you're like looking forward to what's your program um yeah i'm doing like? well right now my my full program well for that concert at least was um so uh, actually let me just look Cause I don't think I remember. So a lot of the music I play, I don't play for very long. Like this goodbye to Lena. I think I had a month before I started it like a month before I performed it. Okay. Well. Something like that. And I, I usually like to do it like that. Cause I get bored with pieces really quickly. Okay. Um, it's a good thing you play contemporary music then. There's... Yeah. Yeah. I love learning new music all the time for sure. Um, if I can yeah. find this program. So you like to read a lot in your practice time. Yeah, definitely. Um, just keeps myself sharp too, you know. Okay, here we go. Um, so, so I'm playing the the Brotons. I was doing All in Twilight by Takamitsu. Cool. Um, How traditional of you. I know, right? He's dead. <laughs> yeah, it's like so unusual for Tom. <laughs> um, Louis Andreessen, uh, Triplum, a piece from 1962, or set of three pieces from 1962. Cool. Really nice. Um, very unguitaristic. Okay. It's like playing saxophone lines on the guitar. I mean, same with his Hout thing. You know, have you have you heard Hout? No. It's yeah. It's an ensemble piece for guitar, saxophone, piano, and percussion. I think. It's like ten minutes of like just nonstop saxophone lines on electric guitar. It's crazy. Wow, that sounds. Um, so that the goodbye to Lena that you just heard, the um, Jose Maria Sanchez Verdu Quaderno de Friedno, uh, the Bonacosta, the first seven etudes that I mentioned earlier, and the Brett Dean Caprichos after Goya. Oh, you played the Brett Dean ones, cool. Yeah, I love those pieces. They you are. Should, you should just learn some of the Tedesco ones too. Now that you have this like theme going on, you know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Just learn some of the ones that nobody plays, like uh, number twenty-three or like. 11 or you know i don't know just pick one of the ones that no one plays yeah yeah there are That's quite a few of them yeah but i think um new music um that i'm starting um i'm working on the barrio sequenza yeah as i mentioned um that's what i'm doing my doctoral research on um and um the the pieces chileal rafiq kaya is writing for me i'm working on those now too cool so those I'm not sure how soon I'll be able to play the Barrio because it's long and difficult, but um, I think I'll be premiering Chalil's pieces um, later this year if concerts are happening. And if not, maybe I'll do it online. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, or just sit on them until you, you can actually play a real live concert. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what do you think is the future of guitar? Classical guitar or just um, in general? I don't know um hopefully it involves being more a, a part of the um general classical music world i think i think uh, guitar really shines in uh, the world of new music so i think we should definitely try to capitalize on that as much as we can 
Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably the most sustainable sort of future we have. Playing contemporary music? Okay. I think so. I mean, about chamber music. I mean, chamber music is pretty sustainable, I would say, too. Yeah, definitely. Chamber music, I mean, with like contemporary chamber music, too. Okay. I think that's yeah. that's brand or grouped in, into that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's what I think. You know, obviously, not everybody's going to feel the same way about that. And I mean, I think. I think it's pretty easy to make a case that at least even if you don't think that's quote unquote sustainable, it's, it's pretty easy to make the case objectively that like there are more opportunities to perform if you go that route in the sense of like, there are more places to play outside of just like the guitar world where people want to hear like the typical repertoire, you know? Um, yeah. It's just, I mean, I know for myself working with composers and playing contemporary music has opened up a lot of doors that would not have been there if I just stuck with like, the typical guitar repertoire because the problem is when you stick with just normal repertoire you're kind of competing against all these other guitars who've been doing it for longer and are probably better at it you know in a way yeah um which... yeah, and especially as like an american guitarist like i did not grow up with classical guitar right yeah i started classical guitar when i was 19 there's no way i'm gonna play bach as well as some like you know European prodigy who's been playing since he was six. There's like yeah. no way. Like, why would I even bother? Or at this point, a Chinese prodigy who's been playing since six. Years. Yeah. Or yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> at this point, yeah, <laughs> it's shifting a bit. But yes, I know what you mean. Uh, and that that music is just not a part of my upbringing. So why would I assume yeah. that I can actually contribute something? Either to that? like Portuguese, Croatian, or Chinese. <laughs> but anyhow, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I'm in a class of people who've been playing since they were that age. Not entirely, but there's a and in Maastricht, it's a different world. Yeah, it's a different world. And it's not it's not even to say that like there aren't great guitarists who start later and stuff. It's just like it, I think even for the people who start at that age, like that young, right? Like it's not. The problem is, it, I think it's less the problem of like the number of people you're competing with because I don't like that mindset necessarily, the competitive mindset. It's more, I think, an issue also of like what places program that kind of music. Like, there are only so many guitar societies that want to have another concert of like Tedesco, Sor Giuliani, Rodrigo, you know? Um, whereas if you play new music, you get into, like you said, a whole new part of the classical music world. Like, when Nathan and I did our little tour, and I know I talk about this like all the time on the streams, so people are probably sick of hearing it, but. Um, a lot of the concerts we got were in places that had never had guitar before or organizations that had never worked with guitar before because our program was about working with um, uh, working with you know composers and stuff oh Ioana says sound balance between the two of you is going sorry am I too quiet am I too loud or too quiet Ioana um, anyways I'm just saying like I, I agree with you that like it, it basically you get the chance to be in a whole new sector of, of classical music and um yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't think it should be a competitive thing either. I think everybody should do like what they want to do. And yeah. It shouldn't be about playing better than anybody else. Of course, you know? yeah. No, in any kind of repertoire for sure. But like yeah. there's just and I know contemporary music also is not that marketable in some ways too. So there's that aspect as well. But yeah. That's also a perception and I don't know. There are lots of organizations that prioritize contemporary music, you know? So in a sense, it gets you hooked into like new organizations, new networks, uh, meeting composers and working with them gets you, gets you into whole new circles too. Um, Plus it builds you as a musician. Like you just learn a lot, you know, doing it. Yeah. It it really forces you to actually learn the fundamentals, which is something that I think as, uh, as classical guitarists, we don't really feel like we have to do, you know, at least like, I don't know stuff like rhythm, for example, is is a very, um, it's something that I guess we we don't take super serious. A lot of guitarists, I think myself included, at one point, don't take really seriously. You yeah. know, it's kind of like a suggestion rather than like actually part of the music. Right. And I think when you start playing contemporary music, it forces you to address, like, really address that as part of part of the music, because mm-hmm. the music doesn't like clearly does not function without that without that aspect of it yeah depending on the language but yeah to a large extent of it usually sure. yeah i mean especially if you're playing like you know elliot carter maybe not so much with barrio but, but right sanchez verdue i think it matters a lot stuff like that you know yeah it's very well sometimes it's the only parameter you have that's like clearly like yeah that is the structure that's that is the unifying element yeah so. yeah you can't rely on just like, oh, this is a nice melody here, and I'm going to milk it. <laughs> I'm going to milk it. People are going to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. 
cool. Not that you should ever. I mean, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Anyhow. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna finish up by playing the lightning round. You ready for this? What's that? I just give you like two options, and you have to answer as fast as possible between the two. Okay. Okay. Uh, cats or dogs? Dogs. Bogdanovich or Brower? Bogdanovich. East or West Coast? East Coast. Okay. Uh, Scarlatti or Bach? Bach. Cedar or spruce? Uh, cedar. Double top, lattice or traditional? Double top. Vanilla or chocolate? Chocolate. Solo or chamber? Chamber. Mammals or reptiles? <laughs> Mammals. <laughs> Beer or wine? Uh, wine. Barclay or Bennett? Bennett. Pizza or pasta? Pizza. Feet, uh, free stroke or rest stroke? Free stroke. Breakfast or dinner? Breakfast. South Park or The Simpsons? South Park. Campanella or regular scales? Regular scales. Uh, so, oh, really? Sor or Giuliani? Sor. Or <laughs> I was going to say neither. <laughs> uh, just kidding. I, I would pick Giuliani. Uh, sweet or salty? Uh, s- uh, salty. Okay. Tremolo or scales? It's tremolo. Horowitz or Rubenstein? Rubenstein. Uh, Rodrigo or Tedesco or Ponce? Ponce. Concert or masterclass? Concert. Restoration of the composer's intention or personal interpretation? <laughs> Restoration of the composer's intention. Okay. Bream or Segovia? Uh, Bream. Carbon or nylon? That's the most Carbon. important uh, Most important one. Uh, uh, Ioana says, who would ever answer reptiles? There have been a few people who said reptiles. I'm trying to remember who said reptiles. <laughs> um, I'll have to go through the archives and check. If someone wants to listen to the lightning round at the end of each episode and find the people who said reptiles and we can publicly shame them for saying reptiles. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Evan Toucher uh, tunes in at the last second. Hi, Evan. <laughs> What's up, Evan? <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to say hi before we sign off. Cool. Um, do you have anything more you want to mention or plug, Tom? Uh, no, I don't think so. Cool. Uh, everyone who's watching... Please, as always, um, check out the archives on YouTube and stuff if you want to hear the other shows. And um, there's also in the description, there's, uh, I should have mentioned earlier, I'm really bad at selling things. There's uh, donation links. There's like a PayPal donation if you want to donate and uh, support like Tom specifically for this episode. And also there's um, the Patreon, which you can check out. And also, I'm going to quickly pull up on the screen here next uh season so that everyone can see a little preview and i'll talk a tiny bit about it um because i just finished putting together the schedule um so coming in june we have ioana gonzaber who's been in the chat here so i'm very excited to have her on the second uh which is tuesday and brandon asbill who's um i think you might talk about like injury prevention and sort of like healthy playing because he's like had some like a bit of a journey with that and then uh renau and on june 9th um he plays his own music so that's gonna be cool because he's gonna play i think a show of almost entirely his own works um elka prince here who's a great uh belgian guitarist um brett gunther from calgary and then i'm gonna have some luthiers on for for the first time so on June 19th is uh, Stephen Dentom, who's a uh, Dutch-German luthier, and he's going to come on with Filip Alilovic, who plays one of his guitars. And Filip is also a composer, so he'll be playing his own music on Stephen's guitars, and Stephen will also talk about like guitar construction and stuff. And then Emily Shaw and Craig Visser are going to be on, which is going to be super cool because Emily is a luthier as well, and she might have a guitar to show. And also she released a new CD recently, and Craig wrote her uh, a large piece for it because he's a composer, and they're kind of like a musical power couple so it's going to be cool to hear his music played by her on her guitar it's gonna be really cool and kevin lowe is coming who's, who's great he's been like in the chat a lot too and um he's it's gonna be playing some cool music and then i'm gonna have my first um like real chamber group live together which is uh the i guess pablo and his uh his girlfriend sang us some schubert a while ago but this is going to be the jkl duo which is uh jacopo lazaretti and carrie lynch playing guitar and flute so we're gonna have like guitar and flute on the stream it'll be fun so i'm really excited about this uh season because i'm gonna have some different kind of shows than normal mm-hmm. and uh try to expand the show a bit just beyond like talking to individual guitarists you know 
Um, but once again, I want to say a big thank you to Tom. Thanks, man. Thank you, Mike. It's been fun. It's been super fun. And um, I'm sure we'll keep keep in touch. And I hope that one day we'll be in the same place again when, you know, this whole situation has sort of like resolved itself, I hope. Yeah, man. It'd be great to see you sometime soon. Cool. And everyone check out Tom's uh, channel and stuff in the description and keep an eye on what he's up to. Lots of new music coming, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. 